Welcome again. In this session, we are reading John chapter 10, verses 22 through to 42. Jesus' shocking claims. Now, before I get into this, I, I just want to share with you something. I was thinking about, you know, what we're going to be reading in the near future, some of the chapters we're going to be getting into, even in the book of John here. I was looking forward to, you know, uh, John chapter 14. I thought, wow, it's going to be an awesome chapter. Then I thought, well, wait a second, John chapter 15 is, is going to be an awesome chapter too. Really, I thought, wait a second, more than just John chapter 15, John chapter 15, 16, and 17 is going to be just so exciting to get into. And then I th thought about more of the chapters. I thought, wait a second, everything we get into is just exciting here. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, I, I, it just, it's just so uh, awesome to get into this kind of stuff, to read the scriptures and to discuss the scripture with you. So, hey, so right now we're at John chapter 10, and we're going to start at verse 22. Let's start reading. It was the Feast of Dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in Solomon's porch. Now, if you notice here, there's a little asterisk by dedication. If you scroll down to the bottom here, it says right here, uh, uh, verse 22, the Feast of Dedication is the Greek name for Hanukkah, a celebration of the rededication of the temple. So let me just go back up here. So we see it's very clear here in the scriptures that Jesus was in the temple when they're celebrating the rededication of the temple, which is the Feast of Hanukkah, which is, as it says here, in the wintertime. Now, for those of you who are not very familiar with it, you know, the Feast of Hanukkah uh, in the world today is a feast that is celebrated by uh, mainly Jews, and it's around the same time as Christmas, okay? And some people uh, look at it as a Jewish Christmas, okay? There's lots of different uh, ways of celebrating Hanukkah. And uh, I know that some of the Jewish uh, people, um, in some Jewish circles, that is, they even have like a Hanukkah tree, almost like a Christmas tree, okay? But uh, yeah, the Feast of Hanukkah is around Christmas time. That's why it says here in the scriptures that it was in the wintertime. But notice that it says that Jesus was right there in the temple. So Jesus was celebrating, was at least part of the celebration of the Feast of Hanukkah. Now, also be aware that the Feast of Hanukkah is not in the Torah, so to speak. It's not in the books of Moses. It's not, command, it's not a commanded feast of God, uh, you know, in the books of Moses. Like we have the Feast of Tabernacles, you know, we have the Feast of uh, Passover, Pesach. But the Feast of Hanukkah was, uh, it came along much later than that, okay? So even though it wasn't in the, the Torah, you know, the books of Moses, that is, uh, Jesus was still part of the feast. He still celebrated Hanukkah, okay? And so, you know, a lot of Christians today, Christians in particular, I mean, they celebrate, you know, Christmas, they celebrate Easter, you know, they celebrate all kinds of different holidays, but they don't celebrate the feasts of the Lord. You know, they don't celebrate the feasts that actually we are supposed to celebrate, the biblical feasts. And I just encourage every one of you who are listening, um, you know, start celebrating the biblical feasts. I know a lot of people think, well, it's, it's just Jewish feasts. Well, no, it's not just Jewish feasts. It's biblical feasts. They are the feasts of the Lord. It's not just the feasts of the Jews, okay? It's the feast of the Lord. So I just encourage every one of you, you know, uh, instead of celebrating Christmas and, and Easter and kind of forgetting about the feast of the Lord, the biblical feast. Why don't we celebrate the biblical feast? Let's put a priority. You know, let's let let that be our primary focus of uh, of our holidays. You know, celebrate as per Bible and you know, as it was in the in the Bible. So notice that Jesus didn't have a problem with celebrating Hanukkah. You know, he was right there in the temple when they were celebrating. So likewise, hey, when Hanukkah comes around. We should do the same thing. We should be right there in the midst of the celebrations, okay? We should celebrate Hanukkah, at least celebrate it at home, okay? This is apparently what Jesus would do. And if you are a follower of Jesus, you're supposed to do what Jesus did, okay, or would do. Let's continue. 
Verse 24, the Jews therefore came around him and said to him, how long will you hold us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you don't believe. The works that I do in my father's name, these testify about me. Again, now pay attention to the fact that Jesus pointed to the works or the miracles that he did as a witness to him. But know this, not everybody who works miracles are always in line with God, okay? So the miracles is just one factor in the equation, okay? So uh, take that into account because Jesus, he pointed to the miracles as, uh, as a witness. But he also pointed to the scripture as a, as a witness, okay? You know, there are some preachers today who do work, seemingly work some kind of miracles. Now, you got to also make sure that they are in line with the scriptures, okay? So let's, let's not just, you know, just be so amazed, oh, you know, these people, you know, these, these miracles are happening, these mighty, you know, spiritual things are happening here in these meetings. Let's make sure it lines up with the scriptures, because that's another witness, a, a, a great witness, okay? First of all, you make sure that the scriptures are a witness to what's going on and to the lifestyle of that preacher, to the doctrine of that preacher. It has to be in line with the scriptures. And also, you know, again, miracles can play a part in being a witness to what they are doing or who they are, okay? Not the primary, not the sole focus, okay? I'm sorry, charismatic brothers and sisters. It's not the sole focus. It can be deceiving if you just look at the miracles and don't look at the scriptures, okay? You've got to be rooted and grounded in the scriptures. Uh, and uh, if the miracles are there, if the great awesome works are there, then that's just a bonus. Verse 26, but you don't believe because you are not of my sheep, as I told you. You know, notice here that Jesus made it clear that the reason why they don't believe is not because they don't have convincing evidence in front of them. In fact, a lot of people they have convincing evidence in front of them, but they still don't believe. Why? Because they're not part of the sheep. They're not the Lord's sheep, okay? They're part of the kingdom of darkness, and no matter what kind of evidence you put in front of them, <laughs> they're not going to believe, okay? Uh, I was thinking about the term, you know, undeniable, you know, evidence, or, you know, you can't, you know, some people say you can't deny this. Well, there's no such thing as undeniable evidence. It, you can deny any evidence. You can ignore any evidence. You can be blind to anything. You can blind yourself. You can, you know, you can choose not to believe, okay? So a lot of people, they choose not to believe the facts. They choose not to believe the evidence set before them. Why? Because they're part of the kingdom of darkness. They don't want the light. They hate the light. Their deeds are evil, okay? So that's why a lot of people didn't believe in Jesus, and that's the same reason why today a lot of people do not believe in Jesus. Let's continue here. Verse 27, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give eternal life to them. They will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. Now, this is a scripture that a lot of these all once saved, always saved people use, okay? To say, well, once you're saved, you're never, you'll, nobody will ever be able to snatch you out of God's hand. You know, you're in the, the hands of the Lord forever. Once you're saved, you're there forever. You see, there's eternal security. Notice, Jesus said that no one will be able to snatch you out of God's hand. That's not to say that you can't walk away yourself. Okay, Jesus said nobody can just come in and take you out of God's hand. He didn't say that you will not be able to just walk away from God by your words, by your deeds, by your lifestyle. You can, and many have. Many have walked away from God. Let's continue. So we're going to scroll down here to verse 31. Therefore, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. 
Good point, right? I mean, Jesus said, hey, I have shown you many good works. I didn't show you, I didn't, what evil did I do? For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, we don't stone you for a good work, but for blasphemy, because you, being a man, make yourself God. Well, 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 it, it seems to be very clear here that Jesus made himself God. Um, otherwise, they wouldn't be threatening to kill him, to stone him. That's what it means by stoning him, to, to actually kill him by by pelting stones at him until he dies, okay? For blasphemy. Let's go on. Jesus answered them, Isn't it written in your law, I said, you are gods? If he called them gods to whom the word of God came, and the scripture can't be broken, do you say of him whom the Father sanctified and sent into the world, you blaspheme because I said, I am the Son of God? If I don't do the works of my Father, don't believe me. But if I do them, though you don't believe me, believe the works, that you may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Now, Jesus pointed to Psalm 82 here where it says, you are gods. And he said, if he called them gods, let's look at the scripture here. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came. Now, this is a very, very important point here because, you know, a lot of the people today, you know, in the new age circles, in the new age world, in the spiritualism world, you know, these kind of people who claim to be gods, you know, they use that, that scripture. They say, well, look at this. It says in the Psalms, you are gods. Therefore, we're all gods, okay? We just got to find the inner God, you know? Now, notice Jesus said, if he called them gods, to whom the word of God came. Who did, this, who did God say this to? Who did the word of God come to, Okay. It didn't come to the world. It didn't come to the unregenerate people of the world. It didn't come to the Amorites, the Hittites, the Canaanites. It didn't come to the Perizzites. It didn't come to the ancient Egyptians. It came to the people of God who are born of God, okay? These are those who are God's children. And this brings me right back to the another point here. And I've said this a few times in my in my teachings here, because a lot of people get this completely wrong. You know, a lot of people say, well, we're all God's children. You know, we're all the children of God here. Not everyone is a child of God. You know, Jesus said, you can go back to John chapter three, you must be born again. He said that to a religious leader, okay? This is a religious leader. That's like going to one of the priests today and say, well, you must be born again. Are you not even going to see the kingdom of God? Okay. What does he mean born again? Okay. Again, to be born again is to be born of God. If you're not born of God, you are not a child of God. Go back again, just a few chapters, John chapter eight, you know, where Jesus confronted a whole group of people and told them they're all children of the devil. They can't be children of God and children of the devil at the same time, okay? A lot of people are not children of God, okay? So those to whom the word of God came, it says you are gods, okay? And that's not everybody. The word of God didn't come to everybody, okay? Just because you got a Bible in your hand doesn't necessarily mean the word of God came to you. God's got to speak this into your spirit. God's got to make it real to you. God's got to breathe life into that word. God's got to make it real to you, okay? He's got to make it real to you. And uh, you've got to obey it. You've got to follow it. You've got to take that word and you've got to make it a part of you. Okay, let's go back to the scriptures here. This is verse 39. They sought again to seize him and he went out of their hand. He went away again beyond the Jordan into the place where John was baptizing at first, and he stayed there. Many came to him. They said, John indeed did no sign, but everything that John said about this man is true. Many believed in him there. Take note as well that what this scripture is talking about is not 
the Gentiles. These are the Jewish people, which would mean people of all kinds of uh, sects of the Jews, okay? The, the Pharisees, okay? There could have been Sadducees there. It's, it just says many of them came, okay? And presumably, most of these people were Jewish people, okay? So that wraps it up for John chapter 10. So join me again for John chapter 11 in the next session. Don't forget to keep on checking back for new teachings, new videos. And as always, as you seek God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. I pray that he gives you revelation and insight into the scriptures and into the things of heaven beyond that of all your peers. Thanks again.